Verse six says this, now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Life in the spirit brings life and peace. You wanna have peace in your life? Walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking in the flesh produces sin, and that is not a peaceful life. Your life turns into a dumpster fire. And you wonder why it caught on fire. Because you're gratifying your own sinful nature. You're doing what you want to do. Well, it just makes me feel good. Listen, I hear that so much in our culture, it makes me want to vomit. You think God cares what makes you feel good? Well, he died for us and he saves us. He does want us to be happy. He does, us, he does want us to enjoy him. But he doesn't want us to be so self-focused and prideful about us ourselves. That's also in the book. Life in the Spirit brings... Life and peace, Galatians chapter six, verse says this, seven and eight, six, seven and eight. Listen to this, this is, a, this is a shot over the bow of a Christian's life. Don't be deceived. God will not be mocked. For whatsoever a person sows, he will also reap that. Because the one that sows to his flesh, the sinful nature, will reap destruction from the flesh but the one who sows to the Spirit will reap eternal life from the Spirit. There's only two options in the Christian life, walk in the Spirit or walk in the flesh. If you try to ride the fence, God ain't gonna let you get away with that. And there's some of you in here who know that. You've had to decide, man, this is not an easy one. I'd rather just be at one side or the other. Many times we jump to the other side, try to gratify our flesh. I said this before, because it looks greener over there. It looks nicer. It's lush. It, it'll make me feel good. Don't ever forget that the grass is always greener above the septic tank. Don't forget. It looks like it, but it's not. You know what's down there, right? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, but I thought, see, that's the problem. We have to rely on the Spirit. Rely on Him for energy, for life. Not, well, I just go over here because it looks better. Oh, please, please, please don't do that. There's another thing regarding this. The life in the Spirit brings life and peace. When I hear people say, and I've said it many times, the most dangerous thing I hear in our culture, and I even hear this from believers, is I'm just gonna follow my heart. Do not do that. Your heart and my heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can't even know your own heart and neither can I. Please don't follow your heart. Follow the heart of the spirit that lives in you. Well, I just want to do what I do and make me feel good. Okay, I'll see you in six months. I'll see you when you're wrecked. God wants us, God wants us to have life and peace. And let me put it in our terms. Do you want to be drama-free in your life? Walk in the Spirit. Stay out of the drama. Another thing. Oh, see, I didn't want to go down this road. Some of y'all need to get off of this thing. This Instagram. This is the church's page. Who is that handsome guy right there? Here's what happens. Before you know it, you blink, two hours is gone. And this is sitting over here, closed tighter than a drum. You know how I know? You know how I know? 
because it's happened to me. Yeah, but I'm looking at the church page. Uh Uh-uh. Yeah, but you're not focusing on me. You make it sound religious. Oh, it's spirit-filled. Thank you, Lord. No. No. And then we get caught up in all the drama. Walking in the spirit means focusing on the things of the spirit. It's just a tool, right? God can use it. But we have to remember it's just that, a tool. This brings life and peace. This is not just a tool. This is life. This doesn't give life. This takes it and sucks it away from you. And I'll say one other thing, totally not related to my sermon, but it relates to that. I've seen what some of y'all post Y'all need to stop lying on Facebook. Praise the Lord, things are going. No, they're not. I know your life. Don't lie. That's even one of the Ten Commandments, and you can't even follow that one. You need to find somebody that you can share things with that can encourage you and show you that life is in the Spirit. Stop looking for your answers on your comment page. I can hear it now around lunch. I didn't like that sermon that JP spoke today. He was getting too personal. Listen, this is personal. This is personal. Jesus dying on the cross was personal. Well, I just don't think I have to do that. Okay, do your thing. Do you. You know. But just remember, you can always come back to the thing that gives life and peace. It's the book. It's the book. Finally, maybe. Verse uh, number six, and I think it's verse eight. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It's another principle in, in Romans chapter eight. Walking in the flesh. Might as well read it. You know, as I speak this stuff, you know, you know I, what I'm thinking? I don't want to say that to those people because I want them to like me. And I read this to the elders yesterday. If I... No, I'm not going to look it up. Paul the Apostle says, who am I trying to please? Am I trying to please men or am I trying to please God? I'm telling you things that are directly related to me and I know that you relate to them. Do you think I want to? No, I want you all to like me. I'm human. I like to be liked. I'd rather not answer all the emails. And why did you do? And why did you? I'd rather not. I want you to like me. But sometimes this is sharp. It's sharp, powerful. It can divide stuff. It can shine lights on our sin and and where we're erring and where God wants us to turn us around. But we have to understand, we have to understand that if we continue to walk in our sinful nature, nature, God is not pleased with us. Me or you? Well, it was only a little thing. I didn't really cuss her out out loud. I just did it in my brain. It's still sin. Listen, ride with me one time in the truck. I struggle, like this is one thing I struggle with. I know that. And I'm always conscious. You say, well, why do you use that illustration all the time? The same reason you always do the sin that you do all the time. Because it's familiar to us. We like it. But those who walk in the flesh cannot please God. Living and walking in the flesh does not please God. And it lacks faith. It takes faith to walk with God through his spirit. Hebrews chapter 11 says this, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you're without faith, you are walking in the flesh. If you are walking in the flesh, you are without faith. It goes, it's interchangeable. 
You're not living in the faith of which God did those things for you and that you believed in. You have to believe that and walk by faith. The Christian, or the believer, has the Spirit of God in, in them. And they have the ability to trust God in ways that people who have never trusted Jesus can. Man, how can you live like that? I just don't understand it. I've heard that so much. Man, that must take a lot of faith. Actually, no, it doesn't. The amount, it's not the amount of faith, really. It's the object of your faith. Who is Jesus? The cross, the cross of Christ. We can't please God if we're walking in sin. And let me tell you, God will not bless a church that's walking in sin. He won't. Some of y'all came from a church like that, maybe. He ain't blessing it. Matter of fact, he's not even here. Y'all just meeting in a room. Because we're walking in the flesh, trying to do things that please God in our sin nature to gratify, to gratify ourselves. We have to be so careful. These elders have to be so careful. Because if they don't do it, what are you going to follow? We talked about this. It was good. It was difficult, but it was good. Lastly, you have to remember that the Spirit of God lives in you. Verse 11. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his Spirit who lives in you. It sounds like the Spirit lives in us. The Spirit of God lives in you. First Peter chapter 1 says this, through him you believe in God. Not through what you do, through him, Jesus, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. If, if you think for one second that you have anything to offer, Jesus, for your eternal home in heaven, you're mistaken it all rests and is founded in God himself through his son Jesus who died on the cross for us, who was buried and who was raised again. That's the hope that we have. If you're trusting in anything else, the apostle Paul says, that's another gospel. Be careful. Remember, the life of the spirit lives in you. Finally, as I close, one of the things that's really important about this with the Spirit of God is the Spirit of God is called the guarantee. He's the guarantor of your salvation. The Bible says you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What does that mean? It means if you place your faith and trust, confidence, belief, and reliance in Jesus a sufficient payment for your sins. The Spirit of God, the seal of the Spirit, guarantees, guarantees that you will spend eternity in heaven with God. Well, what if I, see, there we go. No, nope. yeah, we do bad things and we can hurt our fellowship with God, but we never lose our relationship, you know. You have to remember, it's the Spirit of God indwelling you that works in you, that guarantees your salvation. Not only does he do that, he encourages you, he comforts you. He taps you on the shoulder when you're being a knucklehead, JP. And you, you know, hey, don't act like that. Stop. No, I'm going my own way. Did you see what she did to me? No, stop. Woo, woo, I told you to stop. That's how it works in my life, <laughs> you know? You have to understand that you have the power of the Spirit living within you. It's the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. The Spirit of God raised him from the dead on our behalf. And now that same Spirit, that same power indwells you and provides power for you to live the Christian life, not you to live your own Christian life. 
Here's what I would say as we close. Depend on the Spirit. He lives in you. Um, And I know that it's not easy. I know you want to go back to that thing that you've always done. I know that. I do too, sometimes. But I have to, God, please do something. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. A couple weeks in Bible study, we were talking about this, the way to, to grow and to be discipled by God. And I was reading this verse that I've read all my life, and it said, it says this. When we walk in the Spirit, right? Uh, live life, we, we have choices to make. We can either make bad choices or good choices. We can do wrong or do right. And many times we're tempted, tempted to do the wrong thing. Anybody? Okay, so you three-fourths of you will have to confess after this, right? We're tempted to do the wrong thing. But I was reading this verse, and Vince was sharing in Bible study, and the verse came to mind, no temptation has taken you, but such is common to man. But with every temptation, he will provide the way of escape. Not a way, the way. How? Through his spirit, and his spirit takes you right to the cross where you started. It's all about the cross. The spirit of God reminds us of that stuff. Amen? Amen? So be encouraged today. You don't have to live the Christian life alone. The spirit of God's with you. He can empower you, even when you're struggling. But you have to rely on him. How do we do that? Keep your nose in the book. Buy the T-shirt if you need to be reminded. Amen.